In the eight years we've been making The Greener Road Show, we have been to plenty of places. From the plains of Canada to the hills of eastern Washington, and from the broad fields of Kansas to the rolling hills of Iowa. But one place we have not ventured to is the very beautiful and bountiful state of Wisconsin. That fact, along with a very promising soybean crop, brought us right into the thick of a very unique harvest. Welcome to our latest episode of The Gleaner Road Show. In this episode, we're going to look at why the Wisconsin farming and harvesting conditions have both peculiarities and lessons for all of us, no matter where you farm. We'll then take a look at the part of the combine that may matter the most when it comes to bringing in the beans, and why a gleaner can give you an edge in an otherwise challenging crop. We found Wisconsin farming to be both breathtaking and daunting. For starters, it's absolutely beautiful, and the farmers we met with were a delight to spend time with. Harvesting was another story. For the area we were harvesting just west of Green Bay, the climate is incredibly wet. A farmer told us that in this part of Wisconsin, once it starts raining, it will stay wet the rest of harvest. We've got two lakes on either side of us, and it, it controls our weather pattern for what we do here. We've got Lake Michigan, and we've got a small lake west of us here that we in turn do most of our winter work on the ice. <laughs> this is called fishing. Our trip came in a few days between storms, and by the end of it, they were harvesting soybeans in the rain. The fields we were in often had significant slopes and turns, and were traced by a still-growing border of rocks unearthed every season. We've got a solid ledge subsoil. We work up stones, and then we spend as much time picking stones as what we do farming. Any brush with the bushes on the headland released a torrent of mosquitoes that were as big as hummingbirds. As tough as the harvest can be, the farmers we met with are even tougher. Many of them grow multiple crops across multiple cropping seasons, and nearly all had, or recently had, dairy operations as well. Within about two weeks now, the cows are going, and we're converting everything over into the cash grain. Of course, there's not much in cash grain either, but we're gonna save on the labor of the uh, 12 and 12 there morning and night. The challenges of getting high performance across small and large grains and the need for a quick changeover between corn and beans made these farmers great fans of their gleaner combines. The lighter balanced weight allows the gleaner to get in the field earlier and stay in the field longer, which is a plus when storm clouds are gathering. The lighter weight also eased some compaction concerns, as many of these farmers are reluctant to till up the extremely rocky ground while trying to break up tough hard pan. We're all, you know, a day before probably than others are. I mean, we usually just leave lug marks, nothing more than a lug mark, so we're not squishing or anything. I always joked uh, when you would always put it next to a John Deere, it's, it's you're, you're achieving the same thing at the end, but the size is so much greater that it's, it's kind of hard to fathom why it needs to be so large to, to achieve the same thing at the end of the day. The ability to drop headers and change crops is a real asset in such a dynamic environment and these farmers use it to maximize their time and results. When the weather is right, if it's wet or muddy, you better get going, because when it snows, um, we've had many years where you gotta wait till the snow comes off the corn in order to combine. You wait for days, you know, hope for a wind to get that snow off, and then we'll go combine. As for the mosquitoes, we didn't have any good answers beyond a lot of repellent and minimizing the time we were not in a cab of one kind or another. Even the light rain didn't seem to slow them down. Then again, neither did the gleaner. Some farmers dread harvesting soybeans, and only takes a light coating of bean dust to understand why. The gummy, twisting, and unrelenting vines mixed with stubborn pods that seem to simultaneously refuse to ripen and then threaten to shatter. It's a tough and dirty business, and many farmers would just soon avoid it. Yet, when the beans are both growing and paying well, and often even when they're not, farmers still plant them. So anything we can do to make the bean harvest a little better is a welcome contribution. Gleaner combines have a particular high performance in soybeans, and it's thanks to a design older than the combine itself. When self-propelled combine harvesters were first introduced, the design set a transverse down front cylinder to thresh the crop, because the most efficient and effective way to thresh crop is feeding it directly where it is supposed to be threshed. The Gleaner Combine is the only transverse rotary design that takes crop directly from the feed chains to the rotor and concaves. This simple feeding design minimizes compression, 
twisting, shearing, and crop damaging effects from the Mead to Manipulator shift crop that we see on competitive combine designs. Soybeans are one of the crops that really need to exit the rotor once they've been threshed, or the beans can crack and split inside the rotor cage. Gleaner minimizes crop damage with a 360 degree open cage and more available threshing and separating area, so the crop gets more done in less time within the processor assembly. The fact that a gleaner has a smaller rotor, no feed beater or auger, and gets more done in a smaller space is one of the reasons it can weigh as much as 15,000 pounds less than comparable machines. That can make a big difference on your farm, whether you're in the wet fields of Wisconsin or not. As the new year begins, it's time to think about what will drive your success this upcoming season. Make sure you're connecting with us online to get insights and updates as we make our way across North America. Until then, may your fields have more yield and less rocks. May you find short lines at the elevator and a seat warmer in your cab. May you count your blessings daily in all the ways you count them. We wish you our very best and are so very thankful to call you our customers and friends. Have a great start to the new year. From all of your friends here at Gleaner.